So I thought Adam uh, made a lot of good points and really made it clear when they're developing and building the games that uh, they really start with that foundation and that scaffolding, uh, which a lot of teachers are already kind of building into their curriculum anyways, that scaffolding model. And so it sounds like it could be pretty easily uh, transferable to really start building games around your class as well. Another thing that came up a little bit, and you guys got to experience this, but um, anyone experience fantasy football in here? Or any fantasy sports? Any fantasy sports fans? Absolutely. <clears throat> Absolutely, I love fantasy football. I, start, I literally started when I was in middle school, and I had to literally keep track with a newspaper on my own. Right? And so I was the commissioner, of course. And I, like, <laughs> lit I've done it since I was... So I was an Eagle Scout, and I was a fantasy football commissioner. No, the yeah. I need some badges for these, I'll right. tell you that much. <laughs> Yeah, we'll get right Winning on that. Winning at life. But, but I, I love them, and I think they're great because of the competition, and it's football. I mean, it's, it's, it's something, a subject that's enjoyable, as well as the competition, and there's a way to win. I'm the complete opposite. I did my first round of fantasy football this fall, and I did awful because <laughs> I did not monitor or check it at all. I would no. agree with Scott. It's the first year I've done fantasy football, and there's you have to pay too much attention to things and keep track of it and make trades, which mm -hmm. I didn't, I wasn't willing to invest that time. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Why do you think it's so popular? It's something that's easily tracked and then, you know, you, you kind of follow along week by week, but also it gives that like full competitive edge to everyone. And there's, yeah. and there's so many variables that are part out of your control, but also part in your control, which like, you know, Cheryl saying like doing the trading and things like that, that's part of your control and that skill and the strategy, but also you don't know if one of those team players are going to like injure themselves or anything, but you have to account for those variables that I think, you know, from a student perspective, that's also transposes to like, okay, you have to learn about those kind of things and how, uh, you know, certain variables can change without you knowing. And I think it's, that's kind of the the like part real life part, mm. I kind of think I'm an entourage, Ari Goldstein managing <laughs> kind of a thing. Well, no, so you, it's, you do build a relationship with those yeah, players. Like, um, my wide receivers this week were terrible. And then you're like, hey, um, you know, what's Alshon Jeffrey doing? It's like, well, the Bears are terrible, so we're all sad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you know. I, I definitely know. <laughs> so... I have a question though. Um, with gamification, do you still take into account the students who are disinterested? Because if you've got a class and you're running it fantasy football style, I do not care. That is a great question. So I came across a game called Fantasy Geopolitics. As you guys remember, as we played it and Ben dominated us, oh, yes. uh, he obviously <laughs> oh, did. And uh, we even tried to gang up on him and he still beat us, right? <laughs> Um, and so what happened is I reached out Thanks to... Let's play Risk after my fault. this, by the way. <laughs> As a team. <laughs> so I reached out to the creator of Fantasy Geopolitics on Twitter. And he got back to me. We just started communicating. And we ended up sitting down and talking with him so he could just kind of explain uh, how he invented that game and how we could even keep interested all students or at least most students um, in the classroom. So uh, I'm, a, I'm a teacher turned founder of a uh, ed tech company now called Fan School. And our mission is to uh, take what we've done with fantasy geopolitics, which started in my classroom and uh, continue uh, turning students into fans of learning. So okay. uh, we're, we're putting together a uh, fantasy sports like platform, uh, a lot like fantasy geopolitics using data that actually matters. And uh, we're gonna, <laughs> We're, we're going to uh, take what we've what we've done with fantasy geopolitics and, and sort of come up with a, a couple other verticals. Uh, next next fall will be uh, politics for the election. We'll have sort of a rather than drafting countries, we'll have states, and then uh, using this in any content area. So um, I'm working on that full time now. Great. So how long were you in the classroom before? Yeah. So six years. I was in the classroom yeah. this time last year and. Um, after I got my master's degree and uh, certified in education in Minnesota, started teaching right away and um, was at a charter school that whole time. Could you explain what fantasy geopolitics is? For sure, yeah. So it's like fantasy football for countries and world news. Um, and it all started, you know, kind of I was looking for a way in my classroom to sort of get students uh, reading more news and becoming more aware of what was happening in the world. And, and literally, while I was sort of, sort of frustrated lesson planning, 
um, looking for a way to do this. I, I checked my fantasy football team and, and you know, got distracted for an hour. Uh, and I realized I was researching and, and learning and reading a ton of stuff. And I thought, why, why doesn't this exist uh, for countries or world news or, or data that, you know, that matters? So um, started in my classroom. We, students draft countries. And then those countries now score points based on how many times they're mentioned in the news and then the tone of that news. So it, it, uh, it puts it on like a uh, collaboration conflict scale. So they score positive points if the country's doing something positive in the world and negative points if, if they're doing something negative in the world. So in general, like obviously you're bringing games into your classroom to engage students. Is, what is gaming in your classroom? What should it look like in any classroom? Yeah, so um, I, I wouldn't consider what we do gamification. Okay. Um, so, I, I mean, right, you, you could say it is it is a game, obviously, but but I like to think of it as the learnification of gaming. Um, so so we've taken this, this sort of real, authentic, very popular thing called fantasy sports and sort of used it to learn more. Um, and so I, I wasn't, like, gamifying... Uh, my classroom or I wasn't gamifying assignments that sort of happens but I, but I was going after um, a game that already exists and how can we learn from it um, so it's a lot like uh, Minecraft has gotten very popular you know something that already existed how can you learn from that in the classroom um, Angry Birds right is, is sort of an example of a, a very popular game that teachers um, kind of use to do this um, so so I, I think of it that way as more of a, you're learning from a game, a uh, game that's become very popular, rather than trying to gamify and, and um, you know, sort of add it on top of your content. What, what do you see as the most positive thing about fantasy gym politics for like, students? What do you see as the most positive? Yeah, so like an intrinsic habit creating uh, with reading news. Uh, which which um, research in fantasy sports, I, I found out after I sort of started this in my classroom, research in fantasy sports says that um, this thing called competitive fandom starts. Uh, mm -hmm. And this comes out of the University of Wisconsin, but that it, when you draft a team of baseball players, when you draft a team of football players, you sort of automatically become more aware of those players and what they're doing and what's happening on their teams. And so the same thing happens with, with fantasy geopolitics. Even if a teacher does nothing else with it in the classroom, um, I always describe it as like a, you, you're wearing an Ohio State shirt, so you're going to notice more people with Ohio State shirts on, especially if that's red. The same thing happens when you draft a team of countries. You hear more about those countries in the news. Um, if your parents have the news on at home, you all, all of a sudden tune into that news, right, on the radio, as well as um, some sort of daily habits related to going to that news or, or having it come to you and sort of be, becoming more aware of what's happening in the world. Uh, as, an, as a teacher, what would you say is the first step of, so I take it you created something probably was like a spreadsheet at first, right? Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a Google site. Yeah, you could still, you could still see it on the internet. It's, it's pretty, uh, pretty gross. Yeah, so the, that kind of obviously became something much greater that yep. others could use. Yep. How would, if a teacher has an idea like you had, how would you recommend they start even just implementing it in their own classroom and then also throughout their whole school maybe, you know, or yeah. bigger? Yeah, I mean, I, I'd say just start, right? There are all sorts of books written by Harvard professors and that's, that are titled Just Start. Um, and I, I literally did that in my classroom. I was, I was frustrated. Uh, you know, I distracted myself with, with fantasy football, realized I was doing all this learning. And then, to be totally honest, right, sort of didn't have a lesson plan for the next day. Mm -hmm. And so I laid in bed that night thinking, I wonder if I could do this in my classroom. Um, so we took the next period, the next class period, and we uh, just drafted countries. And it turned out to be a super fun learning experience. And so then after that, I, I designed ways to sort of learn more from it. And so my advice would be, if you, if you have an idea, you know, the classroom, I think, is a great place to experiment. And if it's not, it's probably not the most enjoyable place. Um, so if, if you're not enjoying it, um, try an experiment. And, and every experiment I did in my classroom turned out to be one of the most enjoyable um, times. 
Um, it's a ton of hard work, but I think starting, experimenting, um, understanding your assumptions, and then iterating on those assumptions is is a great way to do anything, especially in education. And how do you reach students that aren't super competitive? So, for example, like we did, we played my office with one of like the free accounts, and and we did a draft, and it was it was fun. Like, and we were like, we got into it. And then one of us just ran away with it. Yeah, he like drafted very Middle Eastern and, and very smart. Yep. And um, and so we were trying to like gang up on him to try to just overtake him. Like yep. everyone traded me their best countries for my yep. works, you know. Still couldn't <laughs> catch him, you know. But so we took it very seriously because yeah. you know it's a small group of people. But what about those students that just aren't very competitive, you know, in nature? Yeah, like, yeah. How do a lot of teachers or you kind of engage them as well? Yeah, so so this this will often happen, right? Uh, the students who are most aware will will often draft really well, and then the students who aren't really aware and draft like Djibouti because it sounds funny um, just get crushed, right? And so um, one of the things that I did in my classroom was like use this as an example of real life stuff, right? The more you're aware, the more you're prepared the more you're going to compete better and the more you're probably going to become successful. And I know that's not how always how it works, but the, the game at the very least provide, provided like a more fun um, sort of efficient and simpler way to get at that life skill. <laughs> and also like a lot of teachers who, who don't really know how to set up a draft well, um, which, which is the case a lot, sort of realize pretty quick that that will happen and sort of reset scores or, or have another draft, you know, a few weeks afterward. And then they sort of figure it out and think like, how can I prepare students to make this as competitive as possible? And then it gets really fun, right? So the, the first time is I always tell teachers like, it's probably gonna fail, right? This is an experiment, have some fun with it. Just be aware that this is probably gonna happen and then use it in your next draft to do a little bit better. Um, I, I always had this problem in my classroom, even when I was like a pro with it. So I called them like the, the bottom fifth, right? I didn't like tell this to their face. We weren't talking about like grades or anything, but there was always like a, a small group of students who would get crushed yeah. um, because they were, you know, drafted countries that nobody knew about. And I, I eventually sort of just said like, hey, you guys always get smoked in this game. Like, are you learning anything? Like, are you getting anything out of it? And and I'll never forget, like, one of my most disengaged students said, like, like, yeah, it's it's really hard for me to to win. But he's like he said, I get why I'm losing and I know how to pronounce Kiribas, uh, which is which I never would have known about. And I sort of learned a little bit about that country and 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 they they always tell me like they enjoy the class experience even when they're losing. And no matter what happens, they always learn a little bit more. Um, so I, I started in my classroom and then and then we're sort of building on this stuff, um, giving students in the bottom ways to sort of get their score up so i don't know if you notice when you were playing teachers can adjust their scores mm -hmm. or like add or subtract points um so we started doing some for instance the first five minutes of class it was like show the fantasy scores and then we did like a geography challenge and so it was very lightweight little stuff to sort of have someone in the bottom challenge somebody at the top and then get more points or, or lose points from the top. And so we, you know, experimented with that stuff, but teachers are doing um, all sorts of things to sort of keep that bottom fifth competing better. They're still learning, but just competing better uh, in the game. That's great. Thank you so much for your time. Um, it's really interesting to hear about your process and how that, how that happened. But it's a cool product too. I wish I um, had a classroom to do it with, even even though I was a math teacher. <laughs> yeah, well, we're we're getting there. Like I said, we're you know the U.S. edition will come out uh, next year, and then hopefully by by uh, this time next year, any any content area teacher will be able to sort of use the same model to to engage in their content. So.